Hello everyone and welcome to Engineer Tomorrow's uh, seventh video for the thermodynamics video series. Today I will be discussing uh, pure substances and phases and um, these are these turn out to be very important concepts to understand in thermodynamics. A lot of times you want to um, mess with the phases of pure substances in order to extract certain amounts of energy um, or put in certain amounts of energy into your system. So uh, it's important to understand what these uh, what these things actually are. And so without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, uh, what is a pure substance? Okay, I'm gonna call that pure, or PS for this, you know, just to be brief. So a pure substance turns out to be a fig, uh, something with a fixed chemical composition. Okay, so what does that mean? Uh, Let's say you have a, you know, like a box full of a certain gas in there, okay, a pure substance. Okay, that, that pure substance could be like, let's say we have oxygen, you know, O2, or we have nitrogen, N2. We could have helium in there, like in, like in a balloon. Um, these are all pure substances. But l let me ask you a question. What do you, what do you think uh, H2O is, or water? Is, is water a pure substance as well? And as it turns out, water is a pure substance. So, yes, yes it is. So you could have water in its uh, liquid form and it would have uh, the same chemical composition as water in its, uh, in its gaseous form as well. The only difference is the arrangement of the molecules, you know, uh, solids have different arrangements than liquids, and liquids have different arrangements than um, gases. But we'll, we'll be describing that later on in this video. So what about what about air? Do you think air is a pure uh, pure substance, something with a fixed chemical composition throughout? And the, the, the tricky thing with air is that air is composed of things like oxygen, um, you know, and a certain amount of nitrogen, and, you know, other components that make up air and when you go through different uh, different phases which I'll be describing soon of air you know it turns out that the so let's say the oxygen uh, has a different melting point um, than the nitrogen okay uh, probably not melting point it's uh, evaporating point so you're going you probably get oxygen as a liquid but but what I'm saying is uh, the different chemicals throughout its composition have different characteristics, which, uh, you know, don't allow for this to behave as a pure substance. So since I'm, di since I'm discussing, uh, you know, phases, let's talk about what phases actually are. Okay, so phases, uh, what are the different phases? So there's, there's actually four, but we'll only be discussing three throughout this video series, and that is... Uh, solid, liquid, gas, and then the other one I'll write it in red, which we're not using, is plasma. Um, if you are interested in more information about plasma, I'm sure there's other YouTube videos that describe it a lot better than I would be able to, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, so, uh, so with these phases, so like I was describing sooner or earlier, phases kind of tell you if something is a, uh, a pure substance or not. Okay, like in the case of air, since you know it, do it doesn't have the same composition at different phases, you know that it's not a pure substance. Okay, so let's let's look a little bit in more detail about uh, you know what solids, liquids, and gases actually look like. So we'll start out with solid. You know, I'll do that in blue. So solids, if you assume, let, let's say that um, each molecule is like a little circle, okay? In solids, what happens is there's repulsive and attractive forces between the molecules that actually make the components or the molecules actually stay in one position. So there's like a, a structure that is formed by the attractive and repulsive forces of the molecular, uh, at the molecular level. So one of the characteristics of solids is, you know, you, you could apply a force right here, and what it would do 
it might compress the space between the two molecules, but generally it'll stay with the same sort of shape. So if you stop applying the force, it, it will more than likely go back to this shape. Okay, and that, that's the characteristic of a solid. And so now let, let's, let's see what liquids look like. Okay, so a liquid is different from a solid in that it has molecules in different locations which are attracted to each other but you know that that attraction kind of varies throughout so let's say let's say you apply a force and we'll use the same thing as the other one so as you apply this force the the liquids are the liquid molecules are actually going to move okay so let's say they move to look something like this right there's there's like a certain you know curvature in here and when you remove the force you know you don't necessarily know how how these molecules are going to you know, behave. There's an attractive force, but there's, there's higher energy in the molecules, and they're kind of generally free to do what they want um, to an extent. So the last one is gas or gases. Okay, and gases are typically, you know, if we think of the molecule scenario like I was just describing, they generally look something like this, where the molecules are relatively far apart, there's their attractive forces and repulsive forces are generally not powerful enough to cause them to behave in a certain manner, and they generally have you know random random motion or compared to each other. And like like liquids, if you put a force on the gas, you know they'll compress to a certain extent and then they'll keep moving around. So you, there's they have this behavior that you don't um, you don't really know what's actually you know, how they're actually going to move in a gas. It's just all random motion. So, um, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing, in particular, water phase changes. Okay, and as it turns out, in thermodynamics, water plays a huge role. You know, there's a lot of uh, boiler applications. You know, or, not boiler, spoiler. Um, you know, steam power plants use water significantly. Uh, HVAC systems usually use uh, refrigerants, like um, well, not water, but I guess I guess you could use water in a similar fashion. Um, so to to kind of just give you some motivation for what we'll be discussing in the uh, in the future videos. I kind of wanted to go through a, uh, a, you know, a hypothetical scenario. Okay, so let's say you have a container full of water. Let's say H2O. Okay, and you run this water through a little compressor. And I'll just, it's actually a pump. Compressors are for gaseous ones, but I'll call this pump. Okay, and that, that raises the pressure of the water as it's going through that pump. And then you take that water and you, you, know, you heat it up. So you have this fire. Okay, this fire. So you're adding heat to it. Okay, so when you add this heat, you actually take the liquid form and you turn it into gases form. That the little gas molecules, and then from this this heated section, let's let's take this this gas and extract some some work from it. So at the higher temperature, let's drop the uh, the amount of heat in it, you know, and extract some work from this uh, from the system. Um, and this will be a big turbine. And don't don't be uh, discouraged if you don't understand what these components are. Currently, they'll be discussed in future videos. So this gas, you know, you're extracting work from it in this turbine, and you know it feeds back to your um, your water and in a certain way. You know, you you take it from gaseous form back to liquid form, put it into your tank. And then you repeat this, okay? So in here, you're adding energy 
uh, to your pump to keep pumping the water through and keep this going, the boiler, keep adding heat, and keep extracting work. So in this, at first glance, you see that there's a lot uh, there's a lot going on with the phases. You know, there's a uh, conversion to this uh, gaseous phase, and then there's a conversion back to the water phase. And you're playing with these phases so that you can extract work through a turbine shaft that's over here. And ideally, you would want to extract more work than you put in. Okay? And the way you do that is because you're adding heat into the system. So to be able to do this, you have to understand, you know, how much heat needs to be added to this. Or what are some of the limitations um, for doing that phase change for your turbine? And I just, I wanted to uh, elaborate a little bit on the turbine. So turbines, to, just to show you how important it is to know the limitations of your system and the phases, if you have this uh, gaseous form and you're running it through the turbine, what you're doing often is dropping the temperature of the uh, of the gaseous molecules going through there. And sometimes what happens is you actually get uh, water molecules in your turbine. And as it turns out, that is very detrimental to the turbine's life. And it's you know it's something you don't want. So you have to know you know exactly where is this water, you know, this vapor going to start turning into a liquid and start affecting your components. So that's that's just a very simple explanation. Uh, in future videos, we'll be discussing, you know, what saturated liquid is, uh, what compressed liquid are, is, um, what, you know, superheated vapors are, or steam. Uh, and th those will be very helpful in future analysis, and it's an integral part to uh, a lot of thermodynamic analysis. So with that, I'll leave you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.